Okay, so for this last page of the lesson, um, I am not going to be showing every little detail of what to do on the calculator. I'm just going to write it down. So if you need to go back to the last video, that explains the calculator work. Um, so this one says the distribution of lifetimes of a particular brand of car tires has a mean of 51,200 miles and a standard deviation of 8,200. We're going to round all answers on this page to the nearest hundredth. Assuming that the distribution of lifetimes is normally distributed, find the probability that a randomly selected tire lasts these times. So we see this, and we see probability, and we're used, no, we're using normal CDF. So for the first one, I'm going to write down the normal CDF. And I'm going to write down for my lower value, 55,000. My upper is 65,000. My mean here is 51,200. And my standard deviation is 8,200. So once that information's written down, if I type it in my calculator, I would come out with 0 0.28 to the nearest hundredth. Um, the next one wants less than, um, excuse me, less than 41,000 miles. So it's normal CDF again, of course, um, lower and upper. So I want less than 41,000. The highest I want is 41,000. And we're going to go then to the negative E99 for our lower. Whenever we need to go down forever, we use that negative E99. Um, so, same mean and standard deviation for this problem, and this one would calculate to 0 0.11. The last one we want at least 41,000 miles. Now, just a little trick here, I've already done the other side for less than 41,000 miles, which was about 11%, so I'm expecting the opposite, or the, 80, or the complement, 89% for this one, but we'll still go through the steps. So, normal CDF, lower, upper, we want at least 41,000, so the lowest we want is 41,000, and we're going to go up to positive infinity. And if I did take this one in, I would get to the nearest hundredth, the 0.8. So I kind of already talked about this, but why does it make sense that your answer to exercise 2B, um, no, I did not talk about this. Why does it make sense that your answer to exercise 2B is smaller than your answer to exercise 2C? So I, why does it make sense that this number is smaller than that number? Well, if I look back at my data and I think about the normal curve, okay, just going to kind of sketch it out, the mean is 51,200 miles. So if I'm talking about being less than 41,000, 41,000 has to be somewhere over here, right, on the left side. So going less than 41,000 has to be smaller than going greater than 41,000. So to summarize, 41,000 is below the mean. So the probability will be less than 50%. And I'm going to say the probability of 2B will be less than 50%, right? And in the same way, the probability of 2C getting greater than that will be greater than 50%. Or I could say something about the complement. Um, so next, without using normal CDF, do you think it would be more likely for the car tires to have a lifetime between 48,000 and 58,000, or between 60,000 and 70,000? So we're not, we could go in and actually calculate these. Once again, if I think about the normal curve, and we think about where the average is, and we could put more information on here, the probability of having something around the mean, right, 48, we're going to say to like, you know, 58, which these lines are estimates because it's really based on the standard deviation. Is it a greater chance to be in here or to be away from the mean, you know, somewhere over here? Okay. 
Yeah. So basically, the reason it's a greater chance to have those car tires last between 48,000 and 58,000 is because these values are closer to the mean, and technically, I should say, more centered around the mean. Where the curve is higher. So, this is our answer, and those are two different ways you could explain it. Um, so, our next question it says Professor Bartridge has 184 students in her mathematics class. The scores on the final examination are normally distributed and have a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 9. Now, here's a new question. How many students in the class can be expected to receive a score between 75 and 85? So we're going to kind of ignore this new, these new pieces of information, and we're just going to do our normal CDF. So we're going to find what's the probability that someone scores between 75 and 85 first. So our lower is 75, our upper is 85 and our mean is 72 and our standard deviation is 9. So if I went through on the calculator and typed all that in, that would give me that the probability of getting between a 75 and an 85 is 0 0.295. Okay. Now, if I want to know the number of people, I need to, like, this is about 29.5%, okay? So I'm going to take that number, and I'm going to multiply it by the number of people. So we're going to do 0 0.0295 times 184 to get the approximately 29.5% of 184 people. So we're expecting 54 students to get scores between 75 and one more like that, it says the number of people in each showing of a Broadway play is normally distributed with a mean of 1,500 people and a standard deviation of 125. Uh, if there are 400 shows per year, approximately how many, so now they're asking the number again, times will 1,750 or more people be expected to attend? So now, with our normal CDF, We want that number or more, so we're going to go 1750 to E positive 99. Our mean is 1500. Our standard deviation is 125. Okay, um, and then from there, that gives us what's the probability of 1750 or more people attending? That comes out to 0 0.023. Okay, approximately how many times we want to have a whole number? Um, I'm going to take that approximate 2.3 percent, multiply it by the 400 shows, which tells me that approximately nine times I will have that many people or more. So it does, that doesn't happen very often. You know, there's a low probability of it happening. 